Hail, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, also, welcome back to the Gods and Goddesses series. Uh, today we are going to be discussing another Germanic slash Norse deity. Today we are discussing the Lord Bragi, the Norse god of poetry, skaldic poetry in particular. And he is perhaps a deity that among modern adherents and practitioners is less widely known, which I find as somebody who is both an artist and a practitioner of Gawler uh, a very sad thing. So his name literally uh, evidently translates to poet and this is indeed as I mentioned one of his spheres of influence and is one of the things that he is most widely known for. Uh, Bracchi is a son of Odin. I believe he is in fact the uh, second oldest son right after Thor uh, and the, uh, he is also the son of the giantess Gunnlod who uh, was the one that Odin had Bragi with. Uh, he is the skald of Valhalla itself, and he is also husband to the goddess Ivun, or the goddess Idun, if you uh, want to be uh, more modern English uh, in that sense. Uh, he is said to have a very long beard, and he is often referred to as, quote-unquote, a long beard. Now, of course, Odin is also uh, referred to as long beard, because Odin is also said to have a very long beard, so not to be confused with Odin in that sense. Uh, he is said to have uh, runes carved on his tongue. Uh, an interesting tidbit, uh, when I actually first talked to Bragi, when I first uh, called on him because I wished to um, basically have him help me enhance my art, uh, because I am, like I said, also an artist, um, he actually <laughs> flashed his tongue. Um, now, of course, I'm just looking at him through my third eye and sitting there in ritual and meditation talking to him, and he, uh, you know, just flashes his tongue at me, and from what I could quickly uh, see of the runes that are indeed uh, carved on there, because I asked him, you know, do you indeed have runes carved on your tongue out of pure curiosity, and if you don't want to answer, don't worry, but so he flashed his tongue, and I saw um, a bind rune, basically, on his tongue. Now, I did not, like I said, see everything uh, that was in the bind rune, but what was standing out to me was that I did see a rune of Ansus, which is, a, of course, a very, um, well, expected room to see for someone who works with words, and also Lagus was in, uh, involved. At least this was the impression that I got from looking at the room, because if you know anything about, of course, bind runes and the way that the um, runes of Ansus and Lagus are shaped, Ansus is basically two Lagus runes stacked on top of each other. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, what I found interesting about this is Ansus, while of course, claimed as Odin's rune, uh, is a rune that is um, a messenger rune. It is a rune of words. It represents the mouth. It represents divine inspiration. It represents all these, uh, these things that are about communication, about uh, both spiritual communication, regular communication from one person to another, from deities to to beings, in that sense, divine inspiration, etc., etc. Now, Lagus is the rune of water. Uh, it is um, a rune that facilitates flowing. Water shapes uh, itself according to how it needs to flow in order to get to some place, unless it is completely blocked off, of course. So when I actually make that connection, um, I'm thinking to myself that, uh, you know, words flow easily is basically what that bind rune said. Now that I think about it, perhaps the rune that was carved on his tongue was alu, or ale. So because, uh, I mean, the myths do talk about uh, there being ale runes, you know, and alu is one of the perhaps uh, most well-known bind runes. So perhaps that was the rune that I saw and I simply did not pick up on the Urus aspect, although a portion of my psyche keep, does keep screaming Urus at me, so perhaps that was indeed just the bind rune for Alu. And I find this particularly interesting because the throat chakra does have some relation to water, the flowing of words, it has relation to um, sound, obviously, because you produce words and um, word magic. And Galdr is word magic. Uh, Galdr was historically, and we don't quite know how it was done exactly back in the day, but the way that I usually practice it is in combination with runes, through chanting, through uh, speech, through rhymes, through uh, chanting the name of the rune, or through just repeating the sound of the rune, or the, the letter associated with it, depending on circumstances. Uh, oftentimes I, uh, or sometimes, I will actually uh, 
cast spells in my native language because usually I do it in English. But for certain occasions, I will speak Dutch for my magic. Uh, partially because most of the people that you will encounter will not speak Dutch and therefore it will be uh, more veiled, more secluded, more shrouded, and therefore more protected if you do it in that sense. So, of course, um, Ansus is also the rune of the mouth, which also relates to the throat chakra. And um, the mind is, of course, also involved, which is where the inspiration comes in. So I find that a very, uh, very interesting thing. And as someone who um, is a practitioner of Galdr, and I had never actually really thought about this, um, I have actually become, during the making of this uh, particular video, during the writing of the script in particular, I should say, because I am currently recording it, uh, as I am, you know, putting myself on camera here for you guys, but uh, I actually feel like I would perhaps want to um, receive some tutelage, I guess, or make a contract with Bragi to the ends of facilitating my Galder. It is said that uh, Bragi, and it's said in the mythology, that uh, Bragi welcomes the new slain into the hall of Valhalla. He regales the Einherjar, both the newly arrived ones and the ones that have already been there for a while, uh, with poetry and music. Uh, Bragi uh, also is apparently welcome in uh, on any world uh, among any people, which is extremely rare because if you uh, read the mythology, you will find that pretty much as soon as Odin slays Ymir, that there is bad blood between the Aesir and the um, the Jotun, of course. So. <laughs> Um, basically, in that act, Odin starts a war with the Jotun that uh, eventually culminates all the way at the end of Ragnarok. So, Bragi is someone who is considered a uh, very good speaker, a very good diplomat. He is somebody who is a good arbiter and a negotiator. And it should be noted in this sense, actually, that um, there is a story in the Eddas where Loki being greeted by Bragi as he enters the hall, as is custom, like I said, for Bragi to do. Uh, he gets insulted by Loki. Bragi gets insulted by Loki uh, by being ignored after Loki greets all the other deities. Uh, Bragi, Bragi basically offers Loki his horse, uh, his uh, sword, and his armoring um, as, a, as a peace offering. And Loki basically just calls Bragi a coward to, you know, just to try to piss him off, challenge him and stuff like that. So, whether one can infer from this that Loki and Bragi are not currently on good footing, I will leave up to the discretion of the viewer. And whether one would like to take this as a um, signal of uh, that Bragi prefers to negotiate uh, rather than fight is also another uh, possible interpretation here. So, there also exists a myth where Aegir, the god of the deep sea, not to be confused with Njord, of course, who is uh, the sea god of our more humanly relevant uh, portion of the seas which we would interact with, so sort of the higher seas and the uh, seas in terms of bringing abundance, wealth, um, fishing, etc. Uh, has a dialogue with Bragi, where Bragi discusses skaldic poetry, uh, the meat of poetry, and how it came about. Now, the meat of poetry came about from the blood of the deity Kvasvir. It should be noted that Kvasvir is a deity that came into being from the saliva from both the Aesir and the Vanir combined. So, Kvasvir is a, uh, is a word, I believe, that means literally saliva, if I am not mistaken. At least that's what my research uh, told me. So, this, this, be, this being, being a combination and a culmination of all the gods combined, or uh, is extremely wise, teaches knowledge wherever, wherever this being went. And now, there are two dwarves, Fjallir and Galar, who slew Kvasvir and who drained his blood, which they then mixed with honey, to form the meat of poetry. <laughs> so that's how the meat of poetry came about. Now, Odin then, of course, steals that meat of poetry back and then spreads it around. And when uh, the story goes that when Odin is transformed, shapeshifted into a bird, he drops droplets of the meat of poetry as he loses some of it while he's flying, and that's how poetry ends up among human beings. So. We see in this myth a very strong connection uh, f between poetry, words, and wisdom. 
and in that sense also, of course, divine inspiration, because it originates with a divinity, uh, in this case, Kvasvya. So this is fitting, of course, as the rune Ansus, uh, the rune of Odin, or the claimed rune of Odin, uh, is also the rune of wisdom, of divine revelation, of messages, of words, and also represents the mouth from which all these things, of course, spring. Because uh, wisdom is great, but not to share it would be doing a disservice to everybody else, of course. So thus it could be said that true skaldic poetry, uh, as mastered by Bragi, therefore also contains true wisdom. And this is, of course, interesting because Bragi is said among the gods to be the ultimate mediator, to be the ultimate diplomat, to be the ultimate um, negotiator. And one could, of course, say that resolving situations peacefully without war could, in many cases, be considered the ultimate solution, where everybody hopefully benefits. So, as a final note, discussing Bragi's more general background, uh, some sources are not entirely convinced whether Bragi was originally a deity or not. Um, some say that he was, in fact, a human bard, and there are multiple candidates, uh, if you research this, um, that may fit that description. Um, and he may have, therefore, just been a human being who got elevated to a deity at a later date. Now, I personally think that, as with so many deities, uh, that this latter thing is actually very likely. Um, and I have discussed this in prior videos, uh, among others my video on Frey, among others, uh, many other rooms and other videos of different topics that I have discussed. Uh, I do actually think that a significant portion of the pantheon that we work with is actually uh, not uh, did not originate as a divinity in that sense. And this is, of course, uh, another interesting topic that I will be getting into a little bit uh, more with the video of Idun, or Idun, that I will make after this video, uh, because Idun is, of course, responsible for the golden apples, as we will discuss in that video, which keep the gods young, which also, therefore, indicates that the gods are not immortal in the same sense that, for example, the Greek pantheon deities are. So these are all little interesting tidbits of information that you can perhaps infer in that sense, that um, there is a potentially interesting occult hidden meaning in those myths that is, uh, that is buried there. So Bragi is a god most skilled in speech, music, song, and poetry. Uh, he, as the god that deals with speech and poetry, is also a god that is highly skilled at the magic known as Galdr, like I mentioned. Uh, the magic of speech in, in many ways, shapes, or, and forms. Uh, often done through poetry, through verse, or at least we suspect that it was done through poetry, through verse, and sometimes through chanting and singing. So, because of his mastery of words, uh, Bragi is said to be the uh, ideal deity. Bragi is the ideal deity for a magician to call on if he wishes to master, uh, like I said, for example, Galder, uh, or if he wishes to, or if they wish to master art in various ways, and this can be for a mundane, um, for a mundane purpose. This can be for magical purpose because it can, of course, be the case that you wish to produce music for magical purposes. It may also be the case that you wish to produce it for mundane purposes, simply for recreation, for people to enjoy, or for yourself to enjoy or for a combination of the of the above, because um, this is um, something that I find very uh, nice of bands like Hailun or Wardruna, who I very uh, greatly enjoy. And again, I'm not uh, affiliated with these people, these bands in any way, shape or form. Let me put that clear here. I'm not in any way, shape or form paid, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying these are bands and people behind it, of course, who bring forth in my opinion, very authentic, great, modern renditions of uh, music that is um, addressing very old, uh, very um, spiritual topics. Um, so topics that I personally, also as a musician, musician, although I'm currently on a little bit of a hiatus with uh, my music, um, that I very much appreciate and that I can very much spiritually uh, and 
out of sheer enjoyment connect you. And Bragi is, uh, in my understanding, and though not truly explicitly mentioned throughout the mythologies, uh, also understood to be a patron of uh, arts in general in our pantheon, as opposed to merely art in the audible sense of the word in the form of music, poetry, and uh, verse, or the written word as well in that sense, of course. Um, I have actually asked him this because I wanted to uh, also have his assistance with art in a more visual uh, representation, and um, he said, yes, I am willing and capable of doing that. So that was m his answer to me. Yes, I am capable and willing to assist with uh, visual art. And he asked me to do a couple things uh, to that end before he could uh, get the ball rolling in that sense. So. It is my understanding and my personal gnosis that Bragi is, aside from just uh, written and audible arts, also a patron of the uh, visual arts. And magicians and artists who are so inclined, like myself, uh, like I said, myself included, uh, can and do turn, therefore, to Bragi for inspiration and how to utilize magic uh, through art in its various forms. So Bragi can, as a result of his qualifications and skill set, and as already mentioned uh, to the, up to this point somewhat, uh, assist a magician in gaining insight into, inspiration for, and learn how to enhance their art in various manners. However, you are a musician, a poet, a writer, a painter, a drawer, or any other kind of artist that you fancy yourself as, uh, Bragi can assist you in gaining creative energy, can show you how to enhance and empower yourself, uh, to improve upon your artwork, upon your technique, Techniques, uh, so that it becomes more appealing. Uh, maybe it can he can give you insight into uh, how best to reach your audience, uh, how best to uh, make yourself more popular, more appealing uh, by making perhaps some tweaks to your art, the way you carry it out, uh, without of course completely drifting away from your own authentic self being expressed through the art, which is of course very important because, in my personal opinion, as artist. Um, the moment that you drift from your actual, um, you know, you, from your actual expression, from what you want to say, what you want to voice, what you want to show, uh, through your art, you're no longer making art, you are just pandering to a crowd. And this is, of course, why so many people, uh, you know, use terms like, quote unquote, selling out and other such things. I mean, for example, I uh, love heavy metal music and or, or metal music I should suppose I should call it because I don't just love heavy metal of course but for those of you who are perhaps not so familiar with metal as a genre and its particular subgenres of which there are dozens um, you know it is a term that you often hear with uh, more mainstream quote-unquote bands and more mainstream uh, artists uh, who used to start out as uh, more underground uh, bands, where you hear the term throwing uh, thrown around that is, uh, you know, oh, they sold out, which basically then infers that they abandoned their own authentic recipe, which made them them, and then uh, started pandering to a more wide crowd in order to uh, garner more followers, more fans, and thus make more money. So. Uh, that, that it of course has its place to make money. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I am very strongly of the opinion that it is, in fact, as I discussed in my Inari video, um, a very good thing uh, to be able to make money through a passion, through something that you enjoy, through whether that be music, visual art, uh, the hell, even pornography could be considered an art in some way, shape, or form, and making money through that is 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 also you know okay in my opinion as long as you of course respect um, the the individuals involved and that they get equal treatment and proper pay and so all that sort of stuff. So you know, um, Bragi can help you with all these things in order to facilitate your art, in order to make it more expressive, to make it more authentic, to make it more you, and to also at the same time make it more appealing to others, or at least help you reach a crowd that is of a similar mind and a similar perception as you. And to also, of course, help you gain more respect, uh, not just uh, for your for your works, but also for you as the individual artist, to uh, help you gain renown. That's also something that Bragi has told me that he can assist with. Uh, he can help uh, 
you know, help energy be guided in such a manner that you will gain more exposure, that you will gain more, um, you know, followers perhaps, that you will gain more people who might appreciate your art uh, to, to follow you, to follow you, to follow your work, to follow your creative endeavors, whether that be, again, music, visual art, etc. So as a result of his status as diplomat and his skill with words, he can also assist you in making uh, connections and building a network in order to get your name and your artwork out there, which is very, very important, especially in uh, the modern uh, spheres in which, we, in which we live, where it's all about networking, about who you know, about who sees your work. If the right person sees your work, uh, you could potentially be set for life, as is the story of, of course, many an, a lucky artist. And, unfortunately, uh, not the story of many a starving artist. Um, so, this is, of course, important in many areas of the life of a professional, like I said. Uh, not in the least to, of course, start selling your artwork or perhaps, uh, you know, having a label sign you if you are someone who does music. Uh, a publisher, perhaps interested in uh, publishing your work, may show up or come across your um, your work, which Bragi may lead to uh, to your work in some way, shape or form, and so on and so forth. So, not only can Bragi assist artists in this sense, he can also assist diplomats, he can assist spokespeople, representatives, uh, salesmen, I suppose, uh, you know, uh, talk to talk, um, public speakers, individuals who are in other similar professions that rely on words, on presentation, on speech, on public appearances, uh, such as perhaps uh, politicians and philosophers. Now you may wonder, what do philosophers have to do anything? Well, I personally love philosophy, I love engaging in it, uh, but uh, you cannot actively, uh, you know, philosophize, you cannot actively engage in debate um, if you cannot, um, on the fly, in the moment, express thoroughly and properly what you have to say, your counter-arguments, and all these things. So if you are someone who debates a lot for some reason, uh, or if that is part of your profession perhaps, uh, like a politician would, for example, um, Bragi can help you to gain that uh, swiftness and clarity of tongue, of word, in order to uh, truly facilitate your, your message and what you wish to convey. Uh, convey. He can enhance your rhetoric, your, your convincingness, uh, your, your your ability to convince an audience, to convince an uh, audience to reach your uh, desired uh, crowd of people that you wish to attract, that you wish to, um, you know, draw to you, that you may wish to perhaps follow you. Um, not only that, um, he can enhance and empower the magic behind your words, their their appeal, their. Um, their impact, their power, if you will, for lack of a better word. And, you know, even if you are a college student, um, if you are somebody who has to take uh, public speaking classes or who needs to do presentations for a variety of, um, for a variety of, uh, of, of classes, for a variety of different topics, or if you are someone who perhaps has difficulty with uh, oral lecturing, uh, that you may uh, find it a little difficult to follow what the teacher is presenting in their lectures. Uh, Bragi could assist you in this sense to uh, help you interpret words better, to make you um, understand what is being said, to process it, and to then uh, put that as well into uh, into action, perhaps in your own uh, into your own essays, into your own work that you have to put forward as a part of that class. Which, in turn, of course, will result in better grades, which, in turn, may open the opportunity up for scholarships, for uh, receiving finances, money, support in many different ways. So that is perhaps also, if you are a college student, uh, something to, to think about. And um, even if, like me, you are a student of psychology and you eventually hope to, um, you know, go into the field of helping people deal with their mental issues, then being able to express um, what your uh, what your observances are with their with the mindset of the other individuals uh, issues with your clients issues for example if you are engaging in cognitive behavioral therapy and you need to uh, uh, 
assist somebody change their mindset. If you can speak the right words in the right way at the right time, this can alter lives. It is something that is very powerful. Um, there is a reason that they sometimes say that the pen is mightier than the sword, because words have such immense power. And as somebody, of course, that practices Galdor, this is something that I actively pursue to enhance. This is, of course, a highly powerful magical ability, the power of speech, the power of words, and not just interconnected to other people, but also just as a ritual tool, as a ritual prop. The things that you voice, that you... Um, that you exert from yourself, because Galdor is a exertive kind of magic. It is making statements, poems, poetry, uh, songs about what your intent is. It is, it, is a, um, it is a matter of speaking your reality into being, for lack of a better term. And that is, of course, what the Fro Chakra is also known for, for manifestation. So, words have so much power. You know, magicians like myself who practice Galdr and other forms of, you know, speech and word magic, uh, such as a, a follower of Hinduism who may utilize a lot of mantras, as I do too, by the way, because uh, I have never really actively spoken a lot about it, but I work a lot with Hindu deities for my uh, understanding for chakras, uh, for energy bodies, I work a lot with uh, Kali, I work a lot with Shiva, especially Shiva, in fact, um, to that end, because as the destroyer, he is someone who can destroy the old and then bring in something new, of course, and one of the recent things that I addressed was my throat chakra, and I am actually very glad that I did, because there was, despite the fact that I have been told that it's one of my gifts, um, there was an enormous blockage placed by an attachment that I have been dealing with that was hindering a certain portion of my psyche, a certain portion of my energy that prevented it from flowing properly. And now that that has been removed, I am just noticing a lot more power behind the Galdr that I perform, behind the magic that I do. I find myself having a lot more clarity in speech and in thought, by the way. Um, and it is actually matching up a lot more with my emotions, with my feelings, with my being, with what I feel and what I want to achieve in a ritual. And I have actually also noticed with the unblocking of the throat chakra and being able to speak my truth more fully, that um, certain adjustments to my own mindset that I need to forcefully make as part of a ritual by placing myself in particular mindsets for particular rituals, that this has become a lot easier. And it is for this reason that I actually very soon want to make a video on the topic of Galdr, because I have said before that I wanted to do this for the longest time, but I've never gotten around to it because either a certain contract was made with a certain deity that required me to make a certain video, or a runic initiation came to an end, as was the case recently with my Lagus video, which took me about two hours to record in total, uh, and then to edit, of course, and then previously to write the script for it, etc., etc. All this costs hours. I mean, you know, you don't really notice it, but uh, recording a YouTube video takes hours out of your time, really, if not an entire day sometimes. So, you know, it, it, it is something that um, that I have found very helpful, very beneficial. And uh, this is why I would encourage that um, anybody who starts working with word magic and um, hopefully therefore by extent also working with Bragi as being the uh, prime deity who presides over word magic in that sense, um, you know, that you will start realizing that not only will your magic and your art and your poetry and everything related to that be enhanced, but that also because these energies that are related to words, to speech, uh, they are so very interconnected with the world around us. Um, this is something that I have noticed. Your speech and your feelings are very intimately connected. The moment that your feelings become more clear, the moment that your inner being, your inner psyche, your energy starts flowing more freely, all these things start opening up, the moment that that happens, your words also start making more sense. You start being less uh, garbled in your speech. 
And I think that it is also for this reason that Bragi is somebody who was seen as a very skilled diplomat, because the moment that you can affect others with your words to that sense, uh, it may even take away the power uh, of uh, an opponent entirely. Your rhetoric may be so convincing that you know you can just convince the opposing party to join you and in fact i would argue that in warfare there is no greater victory than to see than to make an opponent see your side of the argument uh through words and through ideas that they start believing your ideas that they start adhering to your ways rather than that you have to beat them into submission through force through force or violence you know because if you deal with violence in such a manner, and I am saying this as someone who specializes in combat magic, um, this is a very powerful tool that you can actually harness to get people on your side when previously they may, they may have been opposed to you. And that is, of course, also partially dependent on their willingness, of course, to change their perspective, to change their minds, to uh, see things your way. Because there are, of course, people who are so stubborn that no matter what you say or do, that they perhaps will never uh, want to see things from your end, uh, even though it is um, appealing to them or even if it is convincing to them. And that is uh, something that I do really think that Bragi is an exemplar of uh, in that sense, where he can um, talk such a good talk, <laughs> where he is welcome across the, the Nine Realms, which I don't think any other god uh, has the license to claim that for themselves. So that is a very powerful lesson that in some cases, in many cases, the pen can actually be mightier than the sword, or in this case perhaps the spell, because we are dealing with magic here. In fact, um, I would say that the pen in this case would be the spell. That's why we call it spelling. And in this sense, I think that Bragi can also help us uh, explore ourselves, explore our inner feelings, explore and liberate our own inner um, designs, our inner mechanisms, our inner desires. And this can be done, of course, through the expression of art. It can be done through merely observing our own speech as it comes out of our mouths as we are interacting with others on a day-to-day -day basis. It can be done through the way that we do magic when we observe our own intent and how it flows through the words that we speak as a part of this ritual that we are currently performing in some way shape or form so it is a words are a very useful tool um, art is a very useful tool for self-exploration for self-empowerment for self-development and bragi can assist with all of these things if you just ask and provide the right offerings and exchange of gifts as always of course and in fact, I would argue that, uh, as I have argued in many other videos before, like my previous video on Ingvi Frey, that knowing the self, know thyself, it is perhaps the most important foundational, fundamental principle that every magician, no matter what kind of magic you practice, is to master, um, to overcome the old self, to symbolically slay the old self to become a better version of yourself to proverbially hang ourselves from Yggdrasil and to sacrifice ourselves and to then become a more powerful version of ourselves the lower self sacrificed to the higher self of myself to myself I gave myself so that is also a very interesting and to me powerful symbolism in that sense so lastly, um, offerings to Bragi, as with all Norse and Germanic deities, uh, include, of course, especially mead, and in this case I think that is even more appropriate than normally because of the uh, association with the mead of poetry. Uh, beer is also an acceptable offering, of course, as pretty much with every Germanic deity. Uh, apples, uh, particularly who do, uh, you know, I imagine those that would be more of a yellow color because of uh, his wife, Idun, uh, lady who presides over the apples of youthfulness and immortality uh, due to her connection to him and therefore the offerings of apples would be uh, a fitting 
and welcome offering to Bragi, I imagine. Uh, other offerings to Bragi would be any and all pieces of art, uh, of any and all variety, of course, for well, obvious reasons, being the uh, god of art, of poetry. Uh, so long I feel I was kind of energetically informed as I was writing the script, so long as it is from the heart, as it is authentic, as it is you, as long as you put effort and skill into it. So some say that uh, Bragi's colors are blue and gold, and I actually find this a very suitable set of colors for the deity in question. Um, again, to return to the relation to words and the throat chakra, the throat chakra is of course often depicted as, no, the throat chakra is depicted as being the blue chakra, and um, the throat chakra is related to speech, to words, to poetry, to gold, or to exertive word magic. Uh, gold is a regal color, a solar color, uh, which by extent therefore also often, except actually in the Germanic mythology where Sol is a female deity and in most other uh, traditions you see that the solar aspect is always linked with the um, with the masculine and the lunar aspect is always linked with the feminine, but um, I still do feel that that uh, energy in general is understood to be a masculine energy, the solar energy that is. So you know, um, it is also something that radiates, that is bright, that is lofty, it is, uh, I hesitate to say a pompous color, it is, it is a noble, regal color, uh, it, is a, it is a color of wealth, of, of abundance, of opulence, of affluence. So, for a deity who writes beautiful poetry, for a deity who expresses beautiful art, I think that that is actually uh, a fitting, appropriate color. Uh, it is, of course, also the color of the apples of Idun, so therefore also another uh, applicable, appropriate color to give him. So if you wish to give Bragi candles, uh, gold, blue are surf surefire ways to go. Now, I would say that purple is another uh, good uh, color actually to give because of the association with inspiration, with uh, the higher chakras, indico and purple, uh, of course the crown and the third eye chakra, and uh, the inspiration that one receives uh, from the higher self, from the universe, and perhaps also from the uh, external energies that surround us. Um, and that said, by the way, um, if you cannot get a hold for some reason on actual gold-colored candles, or specifically gold-colored labeled candles, uh, yellow is of course a very acceptable alternative to this, and in fact is often used instead of gold to uh, replicate gold. Uh, in terms of incense, if one were so inclined to offer Bragi incense, um, I would go with incense that is um, themed with, you know, general pagan incense, uh, things uh, such as sandalwood would, uh, I have read also, uh, be very applicable. Now, personally, I would think uh, honey incense is, is a great way to, uh, to go about that because of the association, again, with the meat of poetry. Uh, devotional acts to Bragi uh, could be functioning as a mediator or arbiter uh, in a conflict, uh, being a patron of an artist, uh, otherwise supporting creative endeavors uh, such as, I don't know, donating to a art gallery, uh, purchasing artwork from a up-and-coming artist, from an artist whose work you like, uh, whether that is on deviant art on Instagram or an art gallery that you have recently visited and that you perhaps saw a piece of a new artist that is um, trying to make a name for themselves, stuff like that. So that concludes my video on Bragi, the Lord of Poetry. And uh, I hope that you all greatly enjoyed the uh, video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video, which, as I said earlier, is on Bragi's wife, Idun, or Ivun. So please join me in that next video when it is uploaded. Thank you all. Hail.